All right, everyone, Kamala Harris loves censorship. Now she's explicitly calling on Twitter to ban Donald Trump from the platform. Um, you can't actually physically do that, Ms. Harris. The problem is this. Donald Trump's Twitter has been declared a public forum by a federal judge. It would be unconstitutional to ban his account, including, I believe it affects specifically his personal account and at POTUS. So it's both of them. He uses them interchangeably. They tend to spit out the same thing. It's funny because real Donald Trump, I think, is more popular. Donald Trump at this point, he's still, first and foremost, he's Donald Trump. He's the president of the United States, second in his mind. Which, by the way, works perfectly well for me because it helps him to take on some of the countries that are uh, maybe more bitter towards us and more hostile. Kamala Harris, though, has a track record, it seems, of liking censorship. Like, she trots out the far right hate speech stuff online and says, like, uh, YouTube needs to crack down more and stuff like that. And we keep hearing this. And it just, again, look at shock jock radio stuff from the 90s or any of the, like, the public access shit from the 80s, the satanic panic you can see so many edgy things throughout time, and the same dumb arguments are used now that were used then. By the way, the same, it's simply unpresidential argument has been trotted out time and time again. When Obama said, damn it, it was unpresidential. When George W. couldn't use the door in China that time, it was unpresidential. When Bubba Bill had sex with lots and lots of women while being married and president, it was unpresidential. When Herbert Walker puked on the Prime Minister of Japan because apparently warm sake and sushi don't go together very well, uh, or whatever fucking problem he had at the time, apparently passed out after, that was unpresidential. Ronald Reagan, oh my God, a dude with almost no political experience, he's just a lifeguard hunk that sells, che what, Chesterfield cigarettes? That's unpresidential, oh my God, trickle-down politics. Jimmy Carter, oh, he's too much of a, of a religious nut and a son of a peanut farmer, unpresidential. Nobody's presidential. It's the nope true president fallacy, dude. So when Donald Trump says insulting, mean, or weird shit on Twitter, I just look at it as, you know, it's just a new mode of communication. Can you imagine the weird shit, by the way? Da, you know, just rhetorically here. Can you imagine the weird shit other presidents would have said if they had thought of it first? Can you imagine how they would have been grandstanding on Twitter? Like, you know, Obama did some tweeting occasionally, but didn't really take advantage of it. And before that, you don't really have it. Bush, as far as I know, Bush never tweeted as president. Twitter comes from the, like the early 2000s, actually. It's an old-ish company online, but I don't think Bush interacted with it. And the, the first presidency that had like, you know, you have a presidential website gets set up in the, the late Clinton era, if I remember correctly, in the Drudge era. Uh, and then the rest is history. I think Bush barely, I think, had a Facebook presence at the end. I think the presidency established that. Really, they should get on alt tech. It'd be better. Should get on BitChute. Trump, Trump should uh, get a Gab account, actually. Get on Mines or something and be totally unrestricted. By the way, they'd protect those sites. Can't take the site down if uh, the president's own public platform is operating on it. Now, can you? At least if it's a U.S. site, I think that wouldn't count for BitChute. But Gab and Mines, it definitely would. He should definitely get on those. He should be. Ottman needs to talk to him. Torba needs to go in and have a word with with uh, Donald Trump maybe for 10 minutes. It's about all they get in between Zuckerberg going in there to shit it up over and over and talk to Congress and lie to them through his fucking teeth. It's funny, he, he lies to Congress, but Elizabeth Warren is the only one pushing back and she's not even being authentic about it. But Kamala Harris is uh, deeply set against free speech because free speech allows people to mock her. That's really what it's about. If you're being mocked and ridiculed, and people don't like you, deservedly or undeservedly, you're more likely to support censorship. That's why the Democrats support censorship, it seems, right now, or increasingly do. They want to dumb down political discourse and news analysis online, because the independent media largely hates them, because they support censorship, because they're in cahoots with big corporations and they like war and stupid shit like that. They've become kind of like the Bush Republicans, boring and dated and evil and stupid. And Trump represents the other side of the argument. Uh, it's definitely an imperfect, very colorful character. But at the same time, he's not trying to ban people online. He'll get into it directly. He, he loves to uh, tweet insults. He doesn't think... Trust me, Trump is the last person who would ever say that he thought people should be banned from a website for saying something mean. And part of that is, for many decades, he was part of that edgy culture. He was a major figure in the Stern universe for a very long time. He was part of wrestling, part of the shock jock thing, 
part of the MTV thing with his feud with Rosie O'Donnell, who, by the way, her poll blew up in her face last night on Twitter. It was very funny. She said, should Trump be impeached? And, and the nose had it, even though overwhelmingly liberals, you know, <laughs> look at Rosie O'Donnell's Twitter handle. She probably liked it, though. She probably got some new followers. Even if they're just, just there to ship post, at least they're following her, she says. So any attention is good attention when you're Rosie O'Donnell. When you're that late in your career, and really tweeting is your career at that point, eh, what the hell? Ship post all day. I, more power to her, by the way. I mean, it succeeded. If that was her goal, she probably gained she probably gained more followers than I have in like an hour's period because of that. This is pretty great. Now, uh, I think it's quite funny when Kamala Harris is talking about censorship. She just strikes me as like the soccer mom sort. Like the way she talks and gesticulates too. She reminds you of one of those self-righteous, like waspish upper middle class ladies, where they've got the high heels and a lot of jewelry that jingle jangles on, and they and they get like really self-righteous and, and hyper-descriptive and hyperbolic about things. You must do this, otherwise everything will fall apart. Uh, little Jimmy needs his knee pads on, because otherwise little Jimmy will break his legs while skateboarding. R exactly, like, uh, you know, find the character from a movie that, you know, something from... Uh, just imagine some like wine totaling middle class lady with an unfulfilling marriage and, and Kamala Harris could definitely play the actress for such a role. You know, which is exactly why she wants to censor people because they'll point that fucking fact out. They'll point out that she's boring and that she's corrupt. And some people say, well, she slipped her way to the top. No, she just slept her way around. She didn't end up at the top. She's not even going to become the presidential nominee for the Democrats in an election that they're increasingly, it looks like they're doomed to lose anyway. That's about all. Peace out.